it is time to apply the final base coat to these pedal enclosures. I'm going to use blue for one and red for the other. I have never done two colors like this before, but I think it's going to be okay. We shall see. I'm also using pretty dark colors that are going to go over the black fairly well. If I was using white or say yellow, this may not go too well, but I think it's going to be fine. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sand them down with this uh, 320 grit sandpaper. I'm going to apply some of the paint thinner to it and then go to town with the paint. I'm going to do one pair at a time this time, however. Last time I did just the bottoms and then the tops. This time I'm going to do a pair at a time because I don't want to mix in the red and the blue paint together when I'm spraying. So next shot you will see one of these enclosures, the bottom and the top, will have been sanded, the other not. And then I'll sand the other one while I'm waiting for the paint to dry. But I want you to be able to see the difference in what this looks like when it's been sanded. Without any hints, you should be able to tell which one has been sanded and wiped down with paint thinner and which one has not. All joking aside, these two enclosures so far have three layers on them. One layer of primer, one layer of base coat, a second layer of base coat. I'm now fixing to add the third layer of base coat. For each layer, there are three coats of paint. I apply a coat, wait 10 minutes, apply the second coat, wait 10 minutes, apply a third sort of final coat, and then I wait two to three days before I apply the next layer. Okay, I'm not terribly happy with that final layer that I added. I kind of started to run out of blue paint and I knew I was going to be very, very low on the blue paint. I think it's going to be okay though. Uh, I I'm going to sand this down before I apply the final clear coat anyways. So any roughness will be sanded down and sort of smoothed out. And I'm definitely going to be sanding off the top of this one when I apply the hand painting that I will be doing. But for now, these are going to be okay. I'm going to let them dry for a good 30 minutes or so, and then I'll move them up out of harm's way, and I'll start on the uh, Super Squisher enclosure. A couple of tips for applying the paint thinner to the sanded uh, enclosure. Just kind of go real lightly with it. Just take the rag and lightly brush across the enclosure. Don't put too much pressure. And one of the most important tips I can give you is to keep the paint thinner way away from the enclosure. And the reason why is because when you're dipping this over onto your rag and whatnot, sometimes a bit gets splashed out. And if your like, enclosure is right here, you could get like one drop of the paint that will land right on top of your enclosure, and it's going to cause you a lot of trouble. So I like to keep it like way away from where I'm actually working on it. And that should do it for the Super Squisher enclosure. I'm hoping this will do it. I might add another coat of red to it. I think I'm going to be okay. I kind of missed a little bit down here at the bottom. You can kind of see a little bit of the black through it, but that kind of adds to the flavor and the character of it as well. So we'll see. If I, if I need to, I can add another coat. If I don't need to, I don't have to. And just in time because the wind is picking up and the rain is going to start coming. So today was a good day to get this done. This is going to be the artwork for the Super Squisher. What I'm going to do is cut out this template, place it on top here, and then just cut out around Pepe here. And then for each one of these, I'm going to cut out one color. And then I'm going to cut this out, and then I'll place it within a little frame, so to speak, so that when I line everything up, when I paint, they'll all come, come together. And then once I'm done with that, I'll retouch everything. And if that didn't make any sense, don't worry. You'll see it in action. This is the general idea. Here's my template. I just place it on the pedal. I'll tape it to it, and this way I've got sort of a window. Once I cut each one of these out, I'll be able to place it on top of here, and I'll be able to get each one of these aligned. And you can see I've got each one uh, ready to go for what color I'm going to cut out. These are the finished stencils. You can see here's blue, the white of the eyes, the black of the eyes. This one I messed up, but I was able to correct it here. So this is going to be the green. I might start with this one. The two colors of the mouth, the one that I didn't cut out was the lips. I'll just freehand that one. And what I'll do is I will fasten this to the enclosure and then cut these out and put them in one at a time and paint them. But first, I need to sand this down. I sanded the enclosure down one more time. Uh, you can see some of the runoff there on that end. I can sand that down just a little bit more, but I'm already starting to get down to where some of the black is. You might be able to see it right there where my finger is pointing. So I may go ahead and give this another spray with the red. I might as well. It looks kind of cool, but I think I want to get like the solid red going. I don't want necessarily any kind of anomalies like that, unless there's going to be a lot more. I opted to put some more paint on them. Mm -hmm. 
While I wait for the paint to dry, I'm going to work on this tri-parallel mixer, see if I can get it to work. I picked it up on Reverb for $40, and it is broken. It doesn't turn off. So I'm hoping to fix it. But first, I've got to get all of these knobs off, which has proved to be very, very tricky. They were almost glued on. Uh, I actually had to use my heat gun a little bit to get them a little bit softer, to expand them a little bit. Don't want to use something like that. It's going to scratch it up. This is going to scratch it up. But look at what has proven to be the most effective. This is, has allowed me to pry it under and lift up a little bit and then turn it around this way and then get, get the rest of it. So basically I insert it this way and then lift that way so as not to scratch anything on the board or to really mess up the knobs themselves. So wish me luck on this one. It's going to be a hard fix. Several days have passed now, and I believe these are ready to be painted on. I'm going to sand them down, but before I do that, I'm going to sort of re-drill the holes and get any excess paint out so that I can get the hardware back in easily. So I have the hardware pieces out and ready to test to make sure I don't drill too far in. And now I'm going to sand them down. I think the drilling there uh, turned out pretty well. My recommendation when doing that is just to go real slow. You don't want to pull up any excess paint. This is the first one that I did. I went a little too fast. And I got a little nick right there, but the washer is going to cover that up. I'm not really worried about that. So I'm going to sand these down now. These are now ready for hand painting. I'm going to start with the Echo Blue, even though we've already discussed what's going to go on the Super Squisher. I'm now going to show you what's going to go on the Echo Blue. This is the artwork I'm going to put on top of the Echo Blue. That's right, it's going to be an Eddie Van Halen design. I couldn't think of anything else to put on this. One of these is going to be white, one of these is going to be yellow. I'm not sure which. But I'm going to go ahead and cut it out and see if I can fit this on. That came out very well. I'm going to now try to apply some double-sided tape so that it sticks to the pedal very, very well. I probably should have done that first, but it's too late now. Okay, that's good enough. I'm going to paint this one white, and I'm going to let it dry a couple days, and then I'll paint the other one yellow. That looks pretty good. I think it's going to work. I kind of added the paint on pretty thick. I don't want to have to do another coat because once I remove this uh, mask, I'm going to not, not going to be able to line it back up again very easily. So I'm going to let this dry, and we'll see how it turns out. And while that white paint on the Echo Blue is drying, I'm going to go ahead and work on the Super Squisher. I think I'm going to start with the blue one on this one. So I'm going to cut out this and just sort of like lay it in here, and then just carefully get the blue. I'm not going to put the uh, double-sided tape on the back of this one, I don't think, though. I might this one, but uh, it's not very fun to have to cut these back out again. So if you do that, you want to do it before you cut out the stencils. And that is the first layer of hand painting on the Super Squisher. The blue is a little bit dark, but I'm not too worried about it. I hope you see now how, the, how I'm using these as a stencil. I've cut out that portion, and then I just fit it into its frame. And that way, when I go to cut out the rest of these stencils, and I fit it into the frame, they'll line up pretty darn well. This came out okay. I've got some leakage where I didn't get the tape pressed down very tightly, and that's my fault. I'm hoping to be able to sand that back. I've got these little sanding sticks here that will hopefully do the trick. And so I'm going to wait one more day and let that dry a little bit and then sand it down and try to correct my mistakes. Meanwhile, over here on the Super Squisher, I got the shirt part done. It's okay. Got a little bit of bleed over as well. I'm not really worried about it, though, because that's going to get covered up. I'm going to go ahead and do the green. It's been one day. I think it's okay to put more paint because I'm hopefully not going to overlap. And that is the green layer. Hopefully it will turn out okay. It always looks better with the stencil on top of it because you're seeing print. Once I remove it, there's usually a little bit of bleed over. There was a bit with the blue. I sanded a little bit of it away because I knew that I was going to paint over on top of it. And I didn't want there to be any trouble when everything tries to dry. So I'm going to uh, wait, let that dry, and see how it turns out. Next, I'm going to paint the eyes on Wide Peepo. Here's the stencil for that. And then I'm going to sand down my mistakes on this thing. So that's now the blue, the green, and the white. Next will be the black in the eyes, and I'll work on the mouth, and then the black outline, and then some white dots back over the eyes. Well, that turned out relatively well. Now and then again, it really didn't. I still needed to sand it down to get the surface smoothed out. I'm just going to go ahead and go forward. Really what I should do is sand it down some more and just spray paint over the whole thing. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to keep on trucking forward. And that came out kind of bad, actually, at least in terms of if I wanted them to be perfectly straight lines. Them ain't that. But at any rate, I think it looks okay, so I'm going to stick with it. What I will do is I'll sand the yellow down a little bit in a couple days once it dries, and then apply another coat of yellow to it, make it look a little bit crisper. And I might go back over some of that white, too. 
And that takes care of the black for now. I'll go back over everything with an outline in black once all the layers have been added. And I'll probably just go back over a general touch up with everything as well. Second layer of yellow fixed things up a bit. I'm going to add a second layer of white tomorrow after all this dries a little better. I might go back over the yellow one more time and I might do some edging around the sides with some blue. We'll see how that turns out. It's definitely going to be noticeable. It's not going to match the base blue that I have, so it's going to be interesting. Then over on this side, I'm going to go ahead and work on the mouth, uh, either the tongue or the inside mouth, probably the inside mouth first. So that's red and pink inside the mouth there. I'm going to add the brown for the lips. I'm going to go back and touch everything up as needed. What I'm going to do next, however, is I'm going to add more white to these stripes. I'm going to sand down the white here and the black and the eyes, re-go over the white, and then maybe put those white dots in there. I don't know. I may do another uh, coat of black, though. Let me think that through. Quick aside, this is my DSO-138 oscilloscope kit that I put together a couple years ago. Now that I have a Hantec 2 channel oscilloscope, I don't need to use the BNC jack that came with this kit anymore. So I put a 1 8 inch jack into it that's going to be a lot easier to use with things like my pocket operators. So this is the Mega Man and I want to show you this. I thought this was pretty cool. This is sound number 4 and it's a pretty cool little sine wave. I added another layer of white to the Echo Blue. I may go back over and do another yellow kind of mostly to correct this line right here. I think I can get it pretty straight. Then over here on the Super Squisher, I worked on the, the pupils, so I got the black in there. I'm going to sand that down a little bit, and I'm going to work on the, uh, the white, and then add the little dots in the eyes. And then I'll probably go back and redo the green, and then maybe work on the lips. That should do it. This is the current state of the pedals. I believe that the Echo Blue is ready to go. I'm going to try to add the labels to where the potentiometer is going to be. As for the Super Squisher, I'm going to now work on the lips for Pepe here, and then I think I'm going to go ahead and do the outlining in black. Before I paint these labels on, I made sure to draw them out in the order that I want them to be in to make sure that I don't make any mistakes. It's real easy to do that because the labeling is on the bottom of the PCB. You turn it upside down and everything is flipped around. Getting very close to finished on these, I've laid down the background for where the labels are going to be. This one's a little weird because I've sanded it down to smooth it. I'm going to go back over one more coat on each of these. You can barely see the red here, but when I outline it, I think it's going to pop. The front side labels are almost done. I need to add the labels down here at the bottom, which are going to be the names of the pedals. What I'm going to do next is get the labels on the side. I'm going to do out first. What I've discovered how to do this is just to lay this pedal down. Don't try to paint it from the side. It's hard enough as it is from the top and only do one side at a time. So I'm going to do one side and let it dry for one or two days and then do the other side. My neighbor has these dogs. And they're pretty cute. And these are now ready to be clear coated. In my opinion, this is the most critical, scary part of the whole thing because we're done and all I have to do is apply a nice clear coat to it to protect everything and it still could be messed up. So I'm going to take these out to the garage and get the process started. I'm going to start by sanding down the two lids and then I'm going to apply matte clear enamel. In the past, I have been using crystal clear enamel, but I'm not really satisfied with the results and I'm hoping that the matte clear enamel is going to work out better for me. Here are the lids before I apply the clear coat. Let's see how this turns out. That is the third coat. I think this is going to work out. I'm going to let these dry for a while, move them into another room, and then I'm going to work on the top parts. And there they are before the clear coat. That was the first coat. I think this is going to work out. All right, I'm going to wait a little bit longer and add two more coats. So wab it. So that is three coats of clear coat. And I think that's going to do the trick. I'm just going to let them sit out here and dry for about 30 minutes and then take them inside and then let them dry overnight. I am now assembling the Echo Blue. I have the PCB mounted in place. Also have the jacks ready to go. This one, the output is mounted. I'm going to have a little bit of an issue with the input jack. It barely clears the PCB right here, leaving enough room for the stomp switch. 
And as you can see, all the solder lugs are on the bottom. And there's no way that a soldering iron can fit in there. So I'm going to leave it loose and I'm going to solder the wires and then I'll flip it around when the time comes and then tighten it in. And I'll also need to remember to do the LED before I do the output jack so that these wires are not in the way. One trick I like to do is after I get the LED mounted in the holder is I like to color code the, uh, the legs to make sure that I know which side is positive and negative because I tend to trim these down and once they're trimmed down you don't remember which one was the longer one. Also, these rocket sockets are amazing for tightening lugs on uh, your enclosures without scratching up your enclosure. Time to get serious. I just finished the modulator bass show with Mr. Basic, episode 12. I'm going to get back on this pedal. Now, one thing that I need to do is I need to get some kind of a common ground plane, bus, whatever you want to call it, going on. This PCB only has one ground pin. If I look here on my schematic for the Tycho Bray Octavia that I put together last time, I actually had a whole lot of points here for ground that I could use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically recreate this. I'm pretty sure it's going to need to be four, just like this one. And I'm going to carve out just a small piece of this, about four holes. And I'm thinking about tacking it to the side right here with some hot glue. And I'm just going to solder all of my ground wires to it. To cut up this phenolic paper PCB or whatever it's called, I'm scoring it with this utility knife. Do not try to use clippers. As you can see, it doesn't work. I tried using clippers in the past on this, and it just rips off the pads. Instead, I just kind of lightly score it back and forth, back and forth, flip it over, get the other side, and then I'll just bend it and it snaps right in half. This is why I always save the leads that I cut off from my components. Now I've got some really nice diode leads. Here's an LED lead. I can use these as bus bars on this bus for my ground. And here's the final result of the ground bus bars. The question now is do I want to glue them to the enclosure first and which side do I want to glue them to? I want to glue it to this side but I've got this trim pot here in the way so I think I'm going to glue it over here even though the battery clip wire is going to be in the way. I got to make that decision. But in the meantime another decision I need to make is do I glue it first and then wire to it? Or do I wire everything to it and then glue it? I'm thinking about doing the latter, which is what I normally do, but that means that I need to go ahead and cut all the lengths of the ground wires and figure out you know, how long they're going to be roughly, and then go ahead and prep everything. So the first thing I would probably do is uh, go ahead and strip one of the ends on this ground wire. It's the only ground because it's colored black. It doesn't really matter. I could use this red, red wire be just the same. It's probably best to keep things you know, somewhat standardized so people can look at this and understand what you're trying to do. And... At any rate, so I would just take this and uh, strip the end of it and then go ahead and solder it to where it's going to belong. And then when I'm ready, I will cut it to its proper length and then solder it to this guy. Let's see how this works out. I'm just going to record the state of where I am before I take a quick break. I'm hoping to finish this up tonight. I have wired up everything but the switch. And I think everything's going to work out just fine. This is the ground bus that I was talking about. Hopefully now you can see what I was trying to explain all ground connections come to this bus, which then connects to the ground out of the power. And this is something that has worked for me very, very well in the past. And in fact, if we look up here at this other design, it's kind of the same principle right here, only the ground bus is there on the PCB. Very, very, very handy. Here, I just kind of have to make my own. And uh, another reason why this has taken a while is because I've been very careful to route the wires carefully underneath and make sure that anything that is on top get soldered after something underneath has gotten soldered. It's very, very important. So if you look very carefully, like if I were to put this red wire on first, it'd been next to impossible to get some of these other wires soldered, especially with this input jack. So everything was flipped around and I soldered it and I made sure that when I flipped it back, all the wires were going to go the correct way. So same thing with this one. If you notice, I've got it ready to go so I can solder the this is the output. So yeah, the output jack from the switch will go right here. And then when, um, when I'm ready, I'll just flip it around and I'm good to go. And here it is all wired up and ready to go. I just did a smoke test. Everything passed. Did a quick audio test. The circuit seems to be working beautifully. No issues. Uh, I did not try the battery. I'm sure that's going to work though. I'll give you a proper test here in a while. Let me get the lid on and get everything safe so that when I plug things in, you know, also get the, um, get the knobs on the potentiometers to make it easy to, easy to use. But here we go. It works. Awesome. It is now the next day, and I'm starting work on the Super Squish. 
I'm pretty much just going to do the exact same thing that I did for the Echo Blue over here. I'm about halfway finished. I'm getting ready to install the stomp switch. I got everything wired but the things that go to the stomp switch. I did make one mistake that I wanted to point out here. I wired the battery clip negative to the ground bus rail instead of where it's supposed to go, which is the ring of the input TRS jack. So I just kind of pulled it out. I'm not going to worry about removing that solder blob. I'm just going to solder it into the side over here. No big whoop. Finished soldering and I just did a quick smoke test. The indicator light turned on and off when I pressed the stomp switch. I want to make a quick adjustment though. I want to fix this negative wire that's coming into this terminal. I want to turn it around so that it's better adjusted whenever uh, somebody needs to put a battery in. And I might even add a touch of hot glue right here just to make sure that it's really secure. Everything else is pretty good. I don't even really necessarily need to glue this little piece down. It's going to be fine floating right there. And that is a wrap. Another build success. I decided not to add hot glue to anywhere on these pedals. I think it's going to work out just fine the way that they are. There's the front side. I'm going to add the knobs and the little protector switch that I like to use. And then instead of having a demonstration through this camera microphone, I'm going to try to set things up in my mixer and give you a proper jam now. Uh, 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 uh.